So I've been thinking about what I should call this, and it's nothing too complicated, really. It was just a suggestion from a friend of mine that he thought would be cool for me to do. Something not quite so long form, but more than a quick hit content-wise. Maybe Harmony of the Hack? Maybe a code dip? Not going for a full-on dive, but at least getting our feet wet inside what makes the game tick. In these videos, I'd like to explore some of the individual changes made between publicly released versions of the classic Mortal Kombat games and their respective ROM hacks. And yes, there are a ton of ROM hacks of the classics out there, with some ranging from something as simple as different character select screens all the way to pretty much full-on overhauls of the game. Of course, I'll be starting with UMK3 and likely focusing on UMK3+, and some of the differences between those two. It's not like I have intimate knowledge of the game code or of the ROM hack itself, right? I'll introduce us to the waters of the code dip. Code dipping? Cody dipping? Code dip, that's fine. Back in the damage protection code dive video, I talked momentarily about how damage protection worked in auto combos and how the CPU characters performing these combos weren't bound to the same code as human players. That's why Jade's 7-hit combo does 34% damage when done by the CPU, and 25% when done by a human player. Same thing with 30% and 23% damage respectively for Unmasked Sub-Zero and his 6-hit combo. Now, I got this a ton when working on the ROM hack nefariously known as Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 Plus. Drew, can you make Sub-Zero do 30% damage on his combo like the AI does? Uh, no. Well, I can, but no. But I can probably make AI Sub-Zero do the same damage as a human player. The first thing we'll look at is the structure of the auto combo hits. It's important to note that the first hit of each combo, in this case the first elbow, is not included in this specific code. Now, I really wanted to use the N64 source code to display here because that's the most readable source code, in my opinion. Alas, by the time this beta code was released, Unmasked Sub had been cut from the game. So, I'll take the MK3 Revision 2.1 source code and transpose it into something a little more friendly, similar to the Trilogy source code. The most important thing, of course, is the formatting of the combo table. To avoid sounding too much like a drone, I'll leave this up here for you, and you can go ahead and pause here if you'd like. For this video, we're going to focus essentially on one byte, and that is the requirement byte. Aside from none or no requirement, they are stick away, fireball, or down toward like a fireball motion, stick toward, stick down, half damage, stick up, requirement, query, no, and half damage. Requirement query no is only used once, and straight up half damage isn't used at all in the game's code. When this byte is evaluated, if it is greater than zero, the array for the requirements is referenced and the routine called from there. For the damage protection requirement, the value is five. It is decremented to four. A shift left logical of five is performed, added to the value of the array, the value of that location placed in A0, and that routine at A0 is called, which is actually pretty standard stuff for routines in this game. The routine consists of taking the value of the opponent's control thread, which is stored at the 170 hex offset, or 170 hex offset, of the attacker's control thread, and then the number of hits in the current combo, which is stored at the 390 or 390 hex offset, of the opponent's control thread. If the number of hits in the combo is three or greater, damage protection is enabled. Now, here's the rub. The hit itself hasn't been counted yet. So if the hits leading up to this hit tallies three or more, damage protection is enabled. This answers a couple of questions for us. Why does Sub-Zero's five hit combo do more damage at 26% than his six hit, 23%? Why does Sub-Zero's six-hit combo with a jump starter do more damage than his five-hit combo with a jump starter? 
The first question has an easy answer. Damage protection never kicks in on the 5 hit combo because only 2 hits, the 2 punch inputs, have been tallied before the evaluation runs. None of the 5 hits are affected by damage protection, where 3 of the 6 hits are. The second question just involves a little math. The 7 hit combo, due to jump starter, gets 4 hits before damage protection kicks in. The 6 hit combo with jump start gets 3 hits before damage protection kicks in. All three of the damage protection hits do the same amount of damage in each combo, so the seven hit combo ends up doing more damage. Now, I've been explaining this for as long as I have, and I know what you're thinking. That doesn't explain why CPU Sub-Zero does 30% with his six hit combo. You've been jabbering on and haven't talked a thing about fixing this. Well, here we go. The 40 hex offset of the current combo hits data is referenced in code twice once to determine the strike table for that hit, and once to check the requirements. Now, since the CPU isn't sitting at the controls in order to perform any of the required stick movements, it's reasonable not to evaluate the requirement byte in the routine for the AI. However, that leaves one glaring issue. With that byte not evaluated, the routine doesn't, or just doesn't know, that it needs to activate damage protection. To demonstrate this, I'll change the byte to a value of 0 and then do Sub-Zero's 6 hit combo. 30% damage is done just as the CPU does. So how do we fix it? For this particular ROM hack, I chose to hook into code where the delay between each AI input is done. Using similar code for simplicity, whenever the requirement byte is equal to 5, half damage is triggered. This works because each CPU character only has one punch start and one kick start combo that they perform, and the half damage requirement is only used in a few of these, namely Jade and Unmasked Sub-Zero's combos. And that's it. So let me know what you think. For some of these, I'd like to start talking about making MAME cheats and possibly IPS patch files for them, if you guys are interested. How would you feel about that? That way you can experience it in Revision 1.2 or maybe some other releases. And that's all I've got for you, so thanks for watching. Take care.